You know you screwed up when your movie looks worse than Nemesis on picture day. You would think that with gaming being more widespread than the Koof and fandoms as rabid as Cujo, that maybe, just maybe, someone in Hollywood would at least give a crap about making an adaptation remotely accurate. Capcom's recent remakes have enough story to turn each individual movie into a trilogy, so there's no excuse. So what did Hollywood do exactly? Well, obviously, the most logical decision, of course. Take the first two remakes and mash them together like a Frankenstein's monster that has an armpit for an asshole. So let's try to get through this. If there's one thing to positively state, it is some of the cinematography. Just like certain shots in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, some look good using the claustrophobia of the mansion to the fullest or covering things in shadow. And there are a few scenes where it feels like a proper Resident Evil movie, with people fighting off zombies, running out of ammo, hiding in the mansion, and being reduced to a light and a knife that, that are pretty legit. The problems only overwhelm from here on. The genuine moment I mentioned a second ago is immediately cancelled out by the zombies forgetting how to zombie. For example, at one point, Chris is on the floor with a zombie crawling at him with the lighter blowing out constantly. Then when the zombie is in his face, the lighter turns off and the zombie fucking teleports underneath the table through the chairs for a jump scare? Like, why? Then the alterations to the story are unnecessary, like making Chris and Claire orphans that stayed at an orphanage Umbrella would pull children from for experimentation. That change leads nowhere and never needed to be added. Even Wesker has changed from the stereotypical villain to a duller, stereotypical frenemy that accomplishes nothing. I don't care if I'm spoiling anything at this point, he's not the badass who helped make the T-Virus or oversees the Tyrant program, which is absent. Instead, he's just a dude who presumably is hired by Ada to steal the research data from Umbrella. Yeah, if you're a fan, try to wrap your head around that improvement. And none of these actors fill out their roles either. If the movie didn't tell me who Leon or Jill are supposed to be, I never would have made that connection. You could even argue there isn't a male lead in the film. Leon is slapped around like a punch-me-clown scene to scene until he's saved by Claire most times. Even side characters make irrational decisions for the sake of putting key moments from the games on screen. And even those aren't done right. Like the whistleblower in the RCPD jail, he dies there immediately after saying, I'm not taking any chance. And not from Mr. Rex, mind you, who is also absent, but from another inmate turned zombie that eats him right there. Resident Evil, a mouthful of a title, is awful. Combining the remakes of Resident Evil's 1 and 2 should have yielded at least something a little bit more accurate than this. The characters match in name only if they weren't race swapped or had their motivations altered. The gore is surprisingly tame, the characters have the collective brain power of the Eternals, and when the film does get something halfway right, immediately it obliterates that goodwill with extreme prejudice. If anything, this Resident Evil is like the Star Wars trilogy. It is so bad that I now reminisce about what came before when Anderson was in charge. Now, thanks for watching. Please like, share, ring the bell for notifications, and if you want to watch more movie reviews, then subscribe and check out my review of the wheel-spinning Ghostbusters Afterlife at the link over there. Or check out my thoughts on the first Resident Evil by Paul W.S. Anderson over there, and I'll see you in the next video.